are glad you're here. It, uh, it's such a great thing when we can gather and uh, enjoy each other's company and uh, be out in nature and uh, just learn and grow together. How so I started, I've been living in a vehicle for 16 years now, not continuously, but for 16 years. And uh, in, in 2008, I lived in Alaska all my life. I lived for six years in a vehicle in Alaska, in my van. And then when I came to Lower 48, I wanted to just boondock and uh, and just travel and do be a full-time complete nomad, not live in a house anymore. I hated living in a house. This will present to you some ideas of uh, what what I believe and and it will help you because you know people will always uh, when you tell them you live in your van you live in your car you're going to get all and I'm, I'm sure you have gotten all kinds of reactions from your family and from your friends and they think you're so weird it's so weird why are you doing that and I want you to know that there really is a uh, a good answer we are the sane ones, they are the crazy ones, okay? Each society decides its own values. And in hunter-gatherer societies, movement was always the highest priority. And if a thing inhibited movement, it was not valued. Movement was valued. We have institutionalized loving things. If you will know that in your heart and your mind and you just work on it on a daily basis, life will be far, far better. You will align yourself with an objective standard of how human beings should live. And it won't be easy and it'll take a long time. And uh, once you think you've got it, you'll find out you don't have it because here's all my hat, my van is full of crap in here. Their extremely limited material possessions relieve them of all cares with regard to daily necessities and permit them to enjoy life. You get to enjoy life. Yeah, you're poor <laughs> by society's sick standards, but you get to enjoy life. You get to be free. And so uh, I just think these are, are just uh, really, really wonderful and basic truths. Mike, what did you think of the uh, Bob's philosophy talk on Sunday? Yeah, what I really love about uh, the way Bob puts things into perspective is he normalizes this lifestyle. 
and makes makes it seem like we're the smart ones. <laughs> and uh, yeah, because sometimes you feel like you're a bit of an outlier in society. But yeah, you come to events like this, you listen to Bob talk, and you think, "Wow, I've got it together!" Like this is the way this is the way things should be. Yeah, I thought it was spectacular. Yeah. I thought there was a, sort of a depth of thought that I didn't expect. I thought a talk like that might be about the romance of the open road and wide open spaces and freedom and the fact that he went into <laughs> Carl Jung and Collective Unconscious was unexpected and delightful. I loved it. Yeah. Excellent. Yeah, for me it was the uh, what, what, what is affluent and what, how do you meet that and the fact that it's more about wanting less, spending less, you know, and easily satisfying your needs just with the basics on the road is Getting back to nature too, it just all filled in a void that I'm kind of trying to figure out. So I thought it was great that way. The minimum wage in Colorado, or what the company said was $12.59. So again, Colorado, all the minimum wages are going up. Uh, so it makes it more and more attractive. Right, um, and it might be in a state of flux. I mean, some companies may still be paying a monthly stipend and some may have gone over to um, an hourly wage. I think I don't officially, know. Uh, most the company I worked for, they say you had to have, I don't remember, they said you had to have a like some sort of RV or or not, but for the, my company, we've had people in vans. I've had people in a truck that set up a little tent village um, because, again, they needed someone and they liked this uh, person. And so I wouldn't say let that constrain you. Um, all these places, because you are cleaning restrooms, so you have access to a restroom, which makes it nice. Uh, but there isn't a specific regulation, um, at least for the company I worked, that they held by. Yeah. I My first year was in a minivan, and my second year was in a road truck. Single or uh, partner. Yeah, that's a great question. She asked if, it, if you could do it solo or if you had to be part of a couple. Uh, both are options out there because they have plenty of campgrounds that need two people. If it's 80 sites, they're going to need two or three people. Uh, but my campgrounds have always been between right around 30 sites um, can like one person can usually handle. Uh, and so there are plenty of those positions that are available. So um, I'm in a Chevy Express cargo van with a high top um, on it. And lo and behold, it was exactly the right rig for me. I've been extremely happy in it. Uh, don't want anything larger or anything smaller. It's just, just perfect for me. And I think that's when people often ask me now that I'm in a van instead of a Prius, they'll say, oh, you've moved up. For me, it is not a move up because I'm now that much more separated from nature. I, I don't cook outside anymore. Um, I, I don't live outside and, and truly that's why I got the van because I was working so hard for Howard that I was sitting inside, sitting inside of my Prius all the time. And so I decided, well, I got to at least be able to stand up in a rig. So I got a van so I could stand up so that I could cook my meals inside. But I have a hard time selling my Prius, so I still have the Prius for, for when I go back because I love that camping mentality. My advice for a new person is, especially women, I think, I can only speak to a mental thing for women, is that when I first started out, it was so uncomfortable. And I think that a week for me to work through that and to look into my future honestly and to look into myself and say, the possibilities are there and my excitement uh, was greater than my trepidation. You know, the perspective change changes everything. So my reality was exactly the same except my perspective has changed and it has become a joyous journey. There are days that aren't as good, there are some days that are kind of poopy and there are days that are so spectacular. And so that's just been the beauty of this.
topic right now as we look at those fuel prices, right? <laughs> um, interesting fact, and I didn't learn this till, I don't know, probably five, 10 years ago probably, is did you know that your engine has one specific fuel need? 87, 89, 92. Did you know that? If you're giving it, if it needs 87 and you're giving it 92, all of that extra stuff is going to waste. I also want you to look at the tread on them. Like, how are they doing? How are your tires doing? Ladies and gentlemen, this is the only thing touching the ground. Kind of a big deal, in my opinion. Like, that is my safety, that is my everything, is my tires. This is the only thing touching the ground. You're so, having response challenges with your vehicle. Look at your air filter. Is your air filter clogged? This is not a clogged one. This is actually not super bad. This is about the time when I would change one. But I'm going to leave all this stuff up here. I have a bunch of things up here you can look at. But you can see how I got a few uh, bugs in there. 3A and it comes with 600 rated power and if you look at this one this is only 700 but this is much smaller and lighter and uh, it comes with other new technology called uh, bi-directional inverter and this technology allow you allows you to have this one only without another brick adapter like your laptop so when you go anywhere you only have this one you don't need to you don't need to bring the brake adapter you use that you know have a little conversation with them and you say you know i see that you're dumping your gray water there's a dump station here and that's and then you follow it up with another nice piece of bread your dog is so well behaved i hope you're really having a good time and send him over for a cookie and you've just fed him sandwich and you didn't hurt their feelings and you didn't offend anybody and I've been doing it for 40 years it's been working <laughs> yeah uh, most expensive as well uh, and then you've got monocrystalline which is some, somewhere in the middle uh, and it has advantages and disadvantages as well um, which one is best for you it depends um, that's based on the three constraints of your particular install, your finances, your space, and your weight. Um, you're going to make a compromise choice um, to optimize your output when you build that stuff system. I have, I think, well, you can, you can take the boy out of Alaska, but you can't take the Alaska out of the boy. Uh, I still have way too much cold weather stuff. And believe it or not, as they go through it all, you're going to think, man, you got all that stuff? And uh, I have pared it down. <laughs> There was, uh, when I first started out, and for a long time, I had a very uh, heavy pair of what's called vapor boots. They're U.S. military surplus. Uh, in Alaska, they're called bunny boots. They're you know, big, like big bunny feet on you, and they're the only thing that will keep you warm when you're working outside at well below zero. I mean,